Uh, as I was preparing the sermon today, I know it's just a sermon ad because we have communion service. I would like to say that uh, I don't know what you were doing on the New Year's Eve, but I love to just turn on my television and just to see how the rest of the world celebrates. I think the first country that celebrated was Australia, I believe. They were the first ones. They are kind of like a half of us, like they're one day into the future. Then we are, uh, then all the countries, then we're kind of last, right, on the, on the, in terms of celebrating. So here is Dubai. I believe this is the, the tallest building in the world, and they had quite a show there uh, celebrating the coming of 2014. And people in China, they uh, even, uh, uh, they all speak English now, apparently. They said, happy 2014. Um, and then in Moscow, and I'll tell you honestly, my heart, there's something special in my heart when I see Moscow. This is in many ways, these are my people, and they celebrated the coming of 2014, even though my, my people and my country are always in turmoil, politically speaking, but people were happy on that day, all the, all the opposing sides came together. And uh, this was Germany, you know, this is Germany, and uh, you can see the there, they had many signs all across the country simply saying, uh, we welcome 2014. And finally, of course, Toronto is something that uh, the square, the downtown square in Toronto is, is something else because it was packed and people were celebrating. And I thought it was nice. There was nothing wrong with celebrating the new, year, the new beginning. Um, I, uh, I hope you had a prayer that you prayed for your family. You prayed for our church so that we can continue to have that balance. I like uh, Elder Sanders illustration. You know, he has this library of illustrations that every time he, he mentions uh, something from that library, another illustration is something I remember for life. So we need to keep balance. We need to keep moving forward. And, um, and so this is what we're going to do here in Windsor. But I'm not sure if you noticed, here in Canada, for the first time, I, haven't, I have never noticed this before, but the hero of the New Year's Eve programs on the national and the CTV, and even if you check your Yahoo uh, web page, uh, one of the first highlights was that uh, us, which is secular Canada, Canada is no longer religious, I am told. As a pastor, when I go and visit some schools, uh, they say, Pastor, you're not welcome to do the prayer here, or you're not welcome to say this on television. But... Uh, the hero of spirituality today in Canada is, uh, is or are psychics. Psychics are, are the heroes of spirituality today in Canada. So even though the world says we are secular, we are secular, but they have invited uh, psychics on their programs. So, so if you're on Yahoo, it says psychic makes Canadian political predictions. And then if you went uh, further, it says your horoscope for the new year. See what the stars have in store for you. And then I was really shocked that right around uh, midnight, they had, this, uh, they, has, they had this psychic by the name of Matthew Stapley. And you can see the CTV News. So this is the hero of spirituality in Canada today. And um, it was interesting that the host of the show, they said uh, to him, what is a psychic medium, uh, she asked him. And he was very straightforward. He says, uh, I speak to dead people and spirit guides. All right? I communicate with the dead. All right, and, uh, and it was interesting that the host of the show, the lady says, well, I'm really scared to even ask you uh, because I don't think, I don't feel comfortable, she says. Uh, and uh, he says, nothing to worry about. Uh, Matthew Stapley is a powerful uh, psychic medium. He has his uh, website and he has a school and has a seminar that you can attend. And uh, this is what uh, he uh, gave his spiritual advice yesterday on his website. He says, today the spirits inspired me with the thought that you are worthy of miracles. And if you want to see miracles, you contact Matthew. And he is going to show you some miracles. If you want to see the dead people speak to you, uh, he says, uh, you uh, guaranteed that you will be able to contact someone after the seminar that I conduct. And he goes and travels all across the country. And so if you would like to be a channel of the spirits, he says, you come, or money back. I will give you your money back if you do not experience any miracle. So for those of us, maybe some of you are sitting here, and your, your spirituality is really low. You're saying, you know, I don't really believe that there is God. 
But it's interesting that even secular Canada has contacted, uh, contacted a psychic who says, I speak to the dead people. And nobody said, well, this is crazy. You know, nobody said that. Not even the prime minister. Nobody said, well, you know, this is kind of uh, creepy uh, or crazy. Why would we ask some dead people of what will happen in the next year? year? And uh, Matthew says this uh, during his seminar. He says, the purpose of my course is spirit communication with loved ones, spirit guides, and angels. So he guarantees, if you attend his seminar, that you will be contacted. You will hear voices in your head. Uh, and more than that, you will be visited by spirit guides. So friends, we're talking about reality. We're talking about something that is very real. Now, um, I just want to remind you, and all Christians, and those of you that are watching you, us online, this is the lie that the devil is trying to tell us uh, in Canada in 2014. Uh, the biggest lie is that I am the authority when it comes to the future. Ask me and I will tell you. And if you are not sure of what the Bible has to say about the spirit guys, and he says he can talk to angels. So if you want to talk to angels, Matthew says, I'm sure if you attend my seminar, an angel will visit you. The question is, what kind of angel is going to come and visit you? Well, the Bible is very clear. I just want to make sure that Isaiah chapter 8 says, When men tell you to consult mediums and spiritists, should not a people inquire of their God? Why consult the dead on behalf of the living? Why? I would like to ask the CTV News of Windsor, why is it the minister is not invited to, for the New Year's Eve to, to say a prayer for Canada, but a psychic is? I have a question. Since when psychics are more spiritually inclined than pastors, or let's say rel religious leaders? What happened? What happened to pastors? What happened to Christian Canada? What happened to secular ca Canada? Well, I, I, uh, you know, my friends, the, those of you who are thinking about evangelism in 2014, here's the answer. Canadians are seeking for spirituality. Even though they say they are secular, People want to know, they know that there's something deeper, something more to life than just, you know, Christmas trees and, and cars and houses. There's something more. People crave for some kind of spirituality. And so in this new year, we're going to have evangelistic series. And almost God, God almost inspired me on the New Year's Eve, maybe to hold big evangelistic series to confront the psychics of today. And invite the whole city of Windsor to, to come and hear of what the Bible has to say about the future, not a psychic. The Bible has something more to say about psychics, to the law and to the testimony. If they do not speak according to this word, what, what, what does the Bible say? There is no truth in them. And Leviticus says, do not turn to mediums or seek out spiritists, for you will be defiled by them. And I am the Lord your God. And, and one of the scariest verses in the Bible and I say that if you, if you respect God, if you have fear of God, it says, I will set my face against the person who turns to mediums and spiritists to prostitute himself by following them, and I will cut him off from his people. Consecrate yourselves and be holy, because I am the Lord your God. So I would like to say that as a minister of the gospel, to say to the entire Canada, consecrate yourself, Canada. Consecrate yourselves and be holy because God is holy. Because even in our national anthem, we say, God, keep our land glorious and free. Not a psychic. Our national anthem is asking for God to bless our country. Not too many countries have God in their national anthem. We do. But today the hero is a psychic. All right? And uh, he said, I'm going to make the tap, ton tap top 10 predictions. And I thought, he's probably going to deal with, you know, the war in South Sudan. Maybe he's going to deal with uh, just about the war to break out in Ukraine. Maybe he's going to say something like that. Or about the refugees in Syria, the dying children. He says, the number one prediction, uh, I want to say what will happen to Justin Bieber. I said, Justin Bieber? <laughs> and I have something to say about Britney Spears. That was his number two predictions. That's the level of spirituality in Canada, my friend. Our level and our virtue are on the level of Justin Bieber. That's where we are. And everybody goes, wow. I wonder what just... Apparently Justin Bieber is going to write a book, according to him. I, I, really, I'm really, I really care about that. You know? I really... Uh, in 2014, that's all I'm going to think about. 
Uh, well, you know, my friends, that's exactly what our society is now, is like today in 2014. This, these are the lies that the devil is telling the people. Turn away from the Bible, you know, and, uh, you know, talk to Matthew. Matthew will, if you want to see a miracle, you see, that's what the devil does. And some of you say, look, look, I want to see God. I want to see God. I want to feel God. But you see, God is not like the vending machine. You see, the devil says, if you want a miracle, I'll show you a miracle. I'll show you a miracle today. You want to speak to the spirit guides? You want to hear the voice of your dead mother or, or father? I will make sure that you can hear that. All you have to come is, you know, pay $30, $30.99 for the seminar, and, uh, and you will hear the spirit guide. Something amazing that is happening in our country. And uh, at one, you know, I'm a little bit disappointed, but at the same time I'm excited because it tells me that even though these people tell us they are secular, they are not secular. They are asking for questions. And I'm sure that many of you are asking for questions and you're probably asking, you know, God, where are you in my life? Why am I here? Why, what is going to happen to me in 2014? What, what is your will for my life? I'm a student. I'm just about to graduate. What, do you, what plan do you have for me? And many people have given up on God, you know. I, I'm, a, I'm afraid to say that even as a pastor in this church, I notice that some of our teenagers do not come to this church anymore because they have kind of given up on God. But I want to promise you and all the parents sitting here, I know all your children. Remember them right here. And this pastor's new resolution is going to make sure with the youth department to make sure we visit every single young person that I do not see in this church today. And I know to some degree why you are disappointed. One of the biggest things that young people are disappointed is in the hypocrisy that they find in the church. They say people are hypocritical. But I just want to remind you, it's not that they find hypocrisy. The church of God is a hospital. And so don't be surprised if you, sick, if you see some sick people, all right? So those of you who are watching us, you don't really see this, this sickness. It's a spiritual sickness, but all of us are sick. And that's why I'm coming to the, to the sermon title this morning, because the sermon title is The Two Most Terrifying Lies in 2014. The Two Most Terrifying more terrifying than Matthew the psychic. All right. Are you ready? You want to know what the two most terrifying lies in 2014? Well, here it is. Both lies, if you do not, if you believe these lies, they lead straight to death, according to the Bible. Lie number one is, I am a good person. I am a good person. Man, I am such a good person. Pastor, you know what? I am a really good guy. You know, I do a lot of good things. I do more good things than bad things. All right? And line number two is that God is loving and he will not punish. God is loving and he will not punish. And so uh, we're going to confront these two lies just briefly, but I just want to say that these are lies, and I'll tell you why. That's why we have communion service, and the reason we are here is going, I'm going to explain. According to the Bible, the Bible says that all, all of us are sick, and we have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Everybody including the pastor. We are sick. And if you think that we are such good persons, I'm going to tell you something. Um, if God himself were standing right here, you know, like there, there are these shows on television where they connect you to the lie detector test, and, you know, sometimes the two couples are kind of fighting. He says, well, you know, uh, sometimes they, they connect their husbands and they ask them questions, you know, have you had any extra marital affairs or anything like that? And the husband says, no, never. Why you, uh, pff, listen, I love you forever. And then the lie detector says, he's telling a lie. <laughs> if Jesus Christ connected here physically, if he stood and connected to each one of us, would you pass the test? Would you pass the test? I want to tell you how corrupt your pastor is. I don't know if you noticed something today. I did not pray today before my sermon, and I'll tell you why. Somebody, one of you, challenged me on this, and I love when you challenge your pastor. It's good. It's healthy for me, and it's healthy for you. You said, Pastor, why do you pray before your sermon? At first, I did not get it, but then the person, one of you, explained to me. Listen, you say, Lord, please be with us here as I preach. Pastor, who do you think you are? 
the elder just before you prayed and asked for God's presence. What do you think? The angel suddenly ran away after the praise team? And now you're inviting them back? Are you trying to say that you're more spiritual by saying, you know, Lord, now come? We have asked for his, come, for his presence already. Now, you may disagree, you may agree or disagree, and I at first disagreed with this uh, notion, but then I scanned the heavenly scanner, the lie detector scanned my heart. And I'll tell you why I pray before the sermon. You want to know the truth? Sometimes I pray just to impress you. So that you can say, wow, this guy is really holy. He's just about to preach. Look, he's praying. That's the heavenly scanner. That's why today I listen to your prayer, Elder Charles. You said, Lord, bless the preacher, Marian Kosovan. And you know what? Our God is not a pagan God. We do not have to repeat the same prayer 30 times. Lord, bless the sermon. Lord, bless the sermon. Lord, bless the meal, and the meal is blessed. You don't have, you don't have to pray separately for potatoes and onions. The whole meal is blessed. <laughs> That's how corrupt and sick we are, including your pastor. Even the good things that we do are corrupt. That's why Isaiah says, my righteousness are like filthy rags. I have a computer that really became very slow. I just bought it last year, very slow. And I have the antivirus, and I scan the computer. It says everything is fine. But then somebody says, listen, try not another antivirus. And I scan my computer. And I could not believe my eyes. One, two, ten, twenty. One thousand six hundred viruses on my laptop. So I, but then it says, if you want us to clean your computer, please pay $39.99 and we will clean your computer. I haven't gotten to that point yet. Today we are standing in front of the heavenly scanner. He's, gonna, he's scanning our hearts. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. If we claim we have not sinned, we are calling God a liar and showing that his word has no place in our heart. Because truly, if you connect to God right now and really look down deep in your heart, you will see that your righteousness is like filthy rags. Romans chapter 6, verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so this is when we come to the second most devastating lie in our country, and that is God is so good, God will not punish. Oh, you know, especially the little mistakes, he's not going to, he's not a, you know, pastor, don't worry about it. Even if you wanted to impress people, God is just going to, you know, just let you go with that one. You know, friends, I'll be honest with you. I believe there's going to be more pastors in hellfire for things like what I just mentioned to you. I'm praying to impress you. Because God knows our hearts. But I just want to remind you, it's a lie. Because if we look in the history of the Bible... There were times when God punished our planet already. And if you think that God is just going to wink at your sin and just let it go, it's a lie. God is going to hold every single sin accountable. In the Old Testament, there was even sacrifice for the unknown sin. In other words, you look into your heart and say, listen, Lord, yes, I'm corrupt, yes, and this and that. But you know, some of you came and said, you know, Pastor, what you said really hurt me. And I didn't even know I hurt you. You know, I said it. But I did not even know that I hurt you. That is the unknown sin. Do you know that we are guilty of the unknown sin? We, we have the good intention, but it still comes out as corrupt. And so today, the Bible says that even the unknown sin is not acceptable in the kingdom of God. And that's why Noah preached for 120 years, and then God says, look, I'm going to destroy everybody because they're all evil. Listen to what the Bible says. The Bible says... The earth was corrupt before God. The earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted their way in, on the earth. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence. And I'm afraid that many people, those who did not respond to Noah's call, they probably said, Listen, I'm a really good person, you know. I'm not sure why he is really asking me to go into the boat. I mean, God is really good. He's not going to destroy me. I mean, I'm really nice. You know, I give offering once in a while. And, uh, you know, most of the time. Sometimes I don't, but, you know, sometimes I do. 
Um, I'm mostly loving to my children, you know. I think, I think they appreciate me. I, I visit them once in a while. Sometimes I miss soccer game here and there, uh, you know. But uh, mostly I'm a good person. I haven't really cheated on my wife, you know, once in a while I look at the woman here and there, but that's okay, I mean, God understands. You know, there's nothing really bad with that, and just look here and there. Um, I'm afraid there's a lot of people who are like that who are in the crowd, in Noah's crowd. And I'm afraid that many of us today are in the same predicament. And we say, listen, we're so good, God, listen, we, you know, I'm sure that you're just going to forget all my other mistakes. And the Bible says in Luke chapter 17, verse 26, that just as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the days of the Son of Man. God is going to destroy this planet once again, my friend. He's going to hold every single sin accountable. 2 Thessalonians 2, 8 says, And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the splendor of his coming. This is what is going to happen Every sin needs to be accounted for. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire, according to the Bible. And so, my friends, today as we come before this, this holy communion, the holy symbols of Jesus' death for us, just like in the days of Noah, the ark was the escape for people. And that was simply to accept the salvation that was available from God. Today, as we approach the heavenly scanner, the Bible says we need to examine our hearts. Because if we do not examine our hearts... If we eat the bread and drink the wine, we are drinking ourselves into spiritual death. The Bible says that that sin uh, is not going to be forgiven.